What is up guys, welcome back to Cage MMA. We're here because it has just been announced within the last 24 hours that Tyron Woodley, former UFC welterweight champion, will be fighting Jake Paul in a boxing belt on Showtime Sports on August 28th. Now of course this one, from the angle I'm coming from at least, is one that makes a lot of sense. I thought this fight was the one next to be made. You know, there was a lot of talk about Dylan Dennis, uh, you know, I think Bisping got offered Chelsea and made a video today that he got offered the fight. But I think... And thought Tyron Woodley was the right option just because of one, with what happened with Ben Ashgren. Obviously, Ben Ashgren and Tyron Woodley uh, are friends also on the night um, in the Mercedes Arena, uh, Benz Arena, uh, Atlanta, wasn't it? That it took place. There was a, an incident of some sort between Tyron Woodley and the camper, Jake Paul. Tyron Woodley has also come to the end of the UFC reign, you could say, is, is time the UFC is contracts, uh, you know, fully. Uh, complete after that loss to Vicente Luque. He's on a four fight loss streak. Yes, he's been given some killers. But I felt this was the right move and I'm glad we got to this one. Uh so make sure to hit that subscribe button. Of course it's been a you know an up and down sort of thing with this Jake Paul boxing, these social media stars boxing. You know, it kicked off with KSI Logan Paul. Um you know we saw Jake Paul you know defeat Anderson Gibb, then Nate Robinson from uh, NBA and NBA star, of course, although I'm not too, too familiar with his, his, his accolades as an NBA player, with all due respect to him. You know, that was a, an experiment, it was a very poor experiment, and then we had the Ben Eskrin, and it was a it was a route of progression. He went for a, a fighter, albeit it was a fighter who had retired, who was predominantly wrestling, you know, understandably known for the worst, or some of the worst striking in MMA, and he cleaned him out very easily, and... He then needed that next step, and if it was going to be an MMA fighter, in my opinion, it had to be someone who had some level of strike and had a good level of strike. And we've seen Tyron Willie's highlight reel, you know, albeit he's not, you know, maybe the Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor's of this world in terms of boxing. His striking is phenomenal, and he, and he has got some good power. He's got, you know, great physique. You know, once he, he starts landing those overhand rights, and he's got a lot of power in him. And that was the right move. I don't think Dylan Dennis was the right move just because I think it would have gone the same route um, as Ben Ashkin would have done. Obviously, you know, Dylan Dennis is 20 pounds or 15 pounds lighter. I think he fights at 155, doesn't he? Or if not 170, you know, so he's still a couple pounds lighter than Jake Paul. But he is a jiu-jitsu specialist rather than, you know, someone who's got an all-round game who's got a, a, a heavy striking game. So I think that would have been the same sort of experiment and expectations as what Ben Ashkin uh, gave us and probably the same result too and we move on to Tyron Woodley and I think I do think this is the right move I think Tyron Woodley needs this I think he I put a tweet out saying he covers all bases he's a striker he's an active fighter or a recently active fighter at least and he's got a huge social media presence you know he's been on TMZ he's got you know quite a huge following in terms of fighting and uh, and there's a social media uh, presence as well. You know, he he does a lot of work online. You know, he's a great uh, analyst on ESPN. Now with the UFC, you know, you know he brought music out that was similar to like Jake Paul. Was. So there was correlations that made sense for this one, which just didn't make sense with other fighters. You know, whether it was fighters who had been retired three or four years, thirty years old, or bit time where he's what thirty eight now. So he isn't the youngest. Um, ever, but I think well, he's 39 even now. Uh, he's just just had his birthday last month or in April. But yeah, I do think this is the right move. Um, it's an interesting one. August 28th, obviously we've got Logan Paul versus Mayweather coming up very soon in an exhibition bout. It's it's a it's a weird, but somewhat exciting time to be an, uh, a combat sports fan, especially if you are into the YouTube scene. The amount of eyes they're bringing it. All you have to do is type in Jake Paul on. On social, uh, on online, with this on YouTube, and you know, you see the outlets, you see, you know, us talking about it. Jake Paul does numbers more than, you know, 80, 90% of, of MMA. Obviously, only is really, you know, the Conor McGregor's of this world that outdo him numbers wise. And even then, at the moment, you probably say Jake Paul is maybe trending a little bit higher. Just at the fact that Conor McGregor's coming off that loss and you know, his inactivity over so long. You know, Jake Paul is always persistent. You're hearing him on a daily basis, you know, whether it's chatting complete shite or, you know, it, it, he, he just seems to be doing more right now. He's in the he's in the public eye a little bit more. Obviously, Conor McGregor's got to fight Dustin Poirier. But Jake Paul at the moment, 
might just be the biggest name in combat sports. Obviously, you got Canelo, you got AJ, you got Tyson Theory, but you know Jake Paul's putting his money where his mouth is in terms of he's actively fighting. He's not. You don't see this in terms of like with this AJ Tyson Theory. Of course, he's got to go fight Wilder, and that was that was made up. And this is why I'm not a huge fan of boxing. But Jake Paul is making these fights and making them happen. We've not really seen him pull out of a fight or you know, have contract obligation. Then he's, so, he's signed to Showtime as well, which is interesting, on a multi-fight deal as well. So he's no longer with Triller. That 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 um, whole broadcast and production with Triller was you know, piss poor. I think there wasn't Mike Tyson, now, whether Mike Tyson had anything to do with that. I thought that was a very good one. You know, you had the, the darkened room, the white ring. I thought he did a phenomenal job with that one. I thought they would have kept that trajectory. But the last one was, yeah, absolutely piss poor. The fact that Frank Mir was opening a card against um, Steve Cunningham. He did very well on there, but he got shown absolutely no no respect and no light uh, on that uh, production as a former UFC heavyweight champion. I thought he should have got a lot more respect and a lot more reward from Triller uh, as, as a whole, and maybe from Fight Hands as a whole as well. But the fact that he's on Showtime, a high production, he's on a... A mainstream outlet, a very big outlet. You know they got, you know, online productions and media productions going on with the light, like, with the lights of below the belt, etc. They're fantastic when it comes to their their fight content. They do very similar stuff to embedded, etc. Uh, and it's phenomenal to see what they're doing. And of course, they broadcast Bellator, which brings me to my next point. Will we see Tyron Woodley in Bellator next? I think this could be a smart business move for him. Of course, he's. Not got, he's not contracted anywhere within MMA, so he's able to do this off his own back. Similarly, we saw GSP get denied Oscar De La Hoya. In recent times, because he's still contracted to the UFC, albeit he's he's retired. Obviously, Ben Askren was retired, and obviously Dana gave him his grace, probably saying that he's not going to fight in MMA again. But if GSP comes back, Dana's going to say it has to be within MMA, I believe at least. And it just depends on how many contracts. We saw it with Misha Tate. She retired, spent four and a half years now away from the cage, come back and she's still got six fights to complete with the UFC, hence why she's not fighting at one where she was the vice president. So it's a tough one, but for Tyron Woodley, it could mean a stint in Bellator, which does bring up some interesting fights. I was talking in the group chat earlier, MVP would be a fantastic fight as a British fan, British MMA fan. Paul Daly would be phenomenal, of course they fought before, back in 2011, but Paul Daly's coming off a fantastic win. Uh, you know, Tyron Woodley could do with, you know, getting some, some shine on his 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 resume again, albeit he's got a Hall of Fame worthy um, career ahead, uh, behind him. I think there's still a bit, bit more in that gas tank to to release, and I think he needs a new environment. I think Bellator and Showtime would be the perfect place to to show that as well. And especially if he wants to get into the media game, obviously he's with ESPN, but you could see him on the desk at Showtime or at Bellator then, couldn't you? Looking at the likes of Douglas Lima as well, Paul Daly fighting, as I mentioned previously. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see. One, I think it's better for 260 where you got Liam Ramosov, or it might be 261. But it'd be interesting to see if we see Tyron Woodley in and around the vicinity there, or if he gets interviewed on that card uh, as they interviewed Logan Paul. I think Mara uh, Ronello, um interviewed Logan Paul on Bellator 259 ahead of this fight against uh, Floyd Mayweather because it's on the same network. So it'd be interesting to see if we see Tyron Woodley in and around the Bellator sort of environment within the next month or two as we build up to this fight on August 28th. But yes, let us know your thoughts. What's your opinion on Jake Paul boxing? I think for one, you know, I was there live when he fought Deji. And, you know, Deji uh, was very unlucky not to to get the victory just because he hadn't put it working. But we're now here at this point where we're seeing Logan Paul fight the best ever, or arguably the greatest ever in boxing. And we're seeing Jake Paul take on these MMA guys. It'd be interesting to see if he does beat Tyron Woodley, where does he go after that? Because a lot of people are saying Tyron Woodley you know, is finished. He isn't that good enough. He, he's going to lose to Jake Paul. But, you know, we've not seen Jake Paul you know, go under any sort of... We've not seen his back against the wall. We've not seen him what it's like when he has been hit hard. It has been rocked. We've not seen that because none of his opponents are giving him that that objective and that, that, that scenario for us as fans to see him in. But if Tyron Woodley flattens him, we've also got to see and wonder where Jake Paul comes from that and just see where Jake Paul's level is. And of course, eventually, I think we do see him face a boxer. Maybe not, you know, he's not going to fight any world champions uh, anytime soon, but that Tommy Theory narrative, that might play out to to see where 
to see where he is enough. Obviously, of course, Tommy Fury as a boxer is, you know, a lot more. Um, he's got a lot more pedigree and a lot more, uh, I guess, credentials as a boxer than Jake Paul has. Albeit, he's got a very, you know, he's got his own sort of um, questions with his record with who he's fighting. I think he's got hundreds. You know, his, his opponents have got a, a record of zero wins and 170 losses or something like that. I, I'm talking off the top of my head there, but. No, it just shows where boxing is at the moment and why MMA is so much better <laughs> and so much more progressing at the moment because we get the fights we want, albeit John Jones and Francis Ngannou sort of brings a cloud over that statement. But yes, Tyson, sorry, Tyron Woodley versus Jake Paul, August 28th on Showtime is happening. Let us know your predictions down in the comments below and I will see you guys on the next video.